Hello everyone, you are watching scuddy.com and I am Dr. Hamad Adar. Today we will be discussing a very important topic related to foot and ankle trauma that is the talus fracture. Why I am saying very important because talus is the weight bearing bone and avascular talus could be devastating complication for the patient especially as it's a weight bearing bone and forms three joints with other bones. It forms a joint with the tibia from form of a tibiotella joint or ankle joint. Then there is joint with the calcaneum as well in form of a subtellar joint as well as with the naviculum form of tibio navicular joint. So that is why it's very important to know that it's a very important bone, weight bearing bone which is form of the biomechanics of the foot and ankle and it uh, trauma or it avascular necrosis could be highly damaging for the patient. We'll be discussing in this lecture the general principles of the treatment, how to assess a patient with a talus fracture, what are the important points in history, what to look for in ex on examination, and then what type of extras to order to review the talus fractures. Then we'll be moving on to the surgical anatomy. What is important in surgical anatomy is the uh, bone itself. What are the different parts of the bone, where is the neck, body, and the head of the bone? What are different processes of the bone? And then above all is the vascular supply. Where is the vascular supply coming from and why the vascular supply to the talus is important, especially artery to the tarsal canal and where is it is situated. Then we'll be moving on to the mechanism of injury. How actually the injury occurs in the talus fractures? What is the, for example, the most commonly actually it is always the dorsiflexion with axial loading. That is, patient is having a load on the talus that the tibia is pushing the talus from upwards and then the foot is going into the form of dorsiflexion. In this kind of a situation, actually the talus has been caught up between the forefoot, midfoot as well as the tibia. As a result, there is usually fracture of the neck or uh, body of the talus. Then we'll be briefly discussing the clinical features. When the patient comes to you with this kind of fracture, what are its presentation? What are associated signs and symptoms which you need to look for? What may be uh, how to assess the swelling, especially with the foot? And then we'll be going to the classification. You know, classification is of the talus is such a bone that actually it's divided into two entities. One is the talus neck fractures, which is there is a Hawkins classification specifically for talar neck fractures. And then there are other parts of the talus, for example, the processes, the anterior and the posterior and the lateral processes, then there's a body. For that, you have a different uh, classification. You have Mueller AO classification, you have OTS classification, and different other classifications. In this, we'll be only discussing the OTS classification for the body. And lastly, we'll be briefly going through the imaging. How do these images appear on the X-ray and what to look for on the X-ray when you are viewing these classification. After that, we'll be moving on to the treatment. As you know, for every type of fracture, there are two basic categories of fractures. That is either conservative measures in form of a castor splint or operative measures. We'll be briefly discussing on the indication for the operative as well as conservative measures in form of a castor splint. And lastly, we'll be discussing the complications, especially the avascular necrosis, which is the most dreaded, most pure complication of talar neck fractures. If you want to view more uh, videos, especially related to orthopedics, go onto the website and keep watching scuddy.com. Thank you very much.